That's a pretty tone coming off those bells. But the purpose of the bells is not to play music. Their purpose is to let you know when your place is on fire. These look a lot like a smoke detector, but they're not. These detect heat, and when the temperature reaches 135 degrees, a piece of wax melts, triggering the ringer. This is the Vulcan Autosonic Mark 60, a spring-wound, heat-sensitive fire alarm bell. I found two official-sounding names for these things from Underwriters Laboratories, Canadian and U.S. branches. The U.S. UL calls it a, quote, single station heat detector, and the Canadian UL calls it, quote, fire alarm device heat actuated. Unlike smoke detectors, this has no battery or other power supply. The spring makes it ring, and the melted wax activates the ringer. The wax is in a thin round piece of metal, which looks like the bottom end of a ceiling-mounted sprinkler head. They both have something to do with fires, but the fins on the sprinkler head spin and make the water cover a larger area. The threaded ends of the sprinkler head is screwed into a water pipe, a little plug fits into a hole to block the water flow, and the plug is in turn held by a little glass vial, which at a certain temperature will break, releasing the plug and letting the water shoot from the pipe. But again, the fins on the fire alarm bell don't move, but are used to enclose the wax. The fins expose a larger area to the hot air, kind of a reverse heat sink. Before we get into more description of how this thing works, maybe we should address the question, why? It is my understanding that a smoke alarm generally will alert you long before a device that depends on hot air to trip an alarm. The people who made this, U.S. Safety and Engineering Corporation of Sacramento, California, did in fact tell users of those bells to also use a smoke alarm. The label says these were designed for 60-foot spacing, but I have yet to figure out why you would need both these and the smoke detectors. Why not just a smoke detector? Could these be designed for backup in case you forgot to replace the batteries in your smoke detectors? If you have an idea about that, leave a post in the comments section. There's not a lot to these Vulcan Autosonic alarms. There's a lever to wind the spring, there's a test button that will start and stop the alarm, and there's a button that will actually reset the wax if the alarm goes off because of high heat. These came with special brackets to hang them on the wall, and I don't have any of those. I got four of these alarms from an estate sale. One of them seems to have all the pieces and works. One of them has a broken test button but still works. The other two seem to have all the pieces but don't work. It may be they have broken springs. I'm going to try to reopen these in hopes I can replace the broken test button. I also want to see if I can fix the spring problems with either of those units. I'll also try to fabricate an impromptu wall mount. I got the wall bracket made, or a couple of them actually. There are two screws that were used to hold the mounting bracket that came with this. What I've done is run a piece of uh, photo hanging wire between the two screws, leave a little slack in it, and then I'm using picture hooks mounted to this board here to simulate the wall. Anyway, I've got the picture hooks in there, and just like hanging a painting, you take the wire and slip it over the hooks. Now the purpose of the uh, screw at the bottom, where's that right there, is to keep this out from the wood. If I took that spacer out, this part would touch the wood and it would dampen the sound of the bale. When I first started working on this mounting bracket problem, I spent too much time on it. I got some very stiff coat hanger wire, put a loop in each end to go with the screws, and put that on there, and it was too close to the reset button and basically too close to everything. You couldn't get it on the hooks. So I made another one. I did a couple of uh, bends in it to raise it up, and that worked really nice. And then I got wise and I thought, well, that's like a lot more work than one needs to do. And I just instead took a piece of picture hanging wire and ran it between those, left a little bit of slack so that the button wouldn't be covered up. And that seems to work just fine. So this is the design for those of you who have uh, too much time in your hands. I replaced the broken test button with one from a broken spring unit, and it was very easy to do. So this is the back side with the cover plate removed from here. We have another angle on the uh, test button. The test button pushes this piece of metal and lifts up the spring metal right there where that white cap is. And that makes the bell ring. In this case, the bell's not ringing because this is one of the broken units. And I believe the spring itself is broken. Removable pieces include the spring, 
the test lever, this little button here, this is actually the one that's used to reset the wax in case the alarm goes off because of heat. Again, the wax will melt, so this somehow reforms it to uh, block the trigger mechanism until the next time it gets too hot. Also removable is the um, winding lever, and that fits on this piece right here. And this one's just a little bit tricky to put back together. So we put that little hook over the lever, and then we put that over the square end of the shaft, push down on that. Now, put on the uh, cover plate. So once I get that plate on there, and I can just hold it anywhere, and this will stay in. The springs, though, are hidden away in this big housing, and I don't see any easy way of opening it up, so I'm just going to leave it alone. I have two working units now, and I'll keep the other two bells in case I need a gong or two.